Hi everyone, welcome back for another lesson. In this lesson, uh, this is going to be a little bit more hands-on, so it's going to be a practical lesson. We're going to identify acids, bases, and salts based on their formula, as well as non-electrolytes, and we will also be completing incomplete electrolytic dissociation equations. So when an acid breaks apart, or a base, or a salt, what kind of ions get produced, or if you're given the actual ions, what was the original substance. Okay, so let's take a look. First, we're going to go over the rules, the general rules for acids, bases, and salts. So for acids, generally the formula starts with an H. It could be that it also ends with COOH. If you recall. Now for the bases, we have the end of the formula, it ends with OH. It's important that the beginning of it be basically a cation, so normally it's going to be a metal. So that's going to split into your metal here, which is going to form your cation, and your hydroxide ion. For salts, it's a metal with a non-metal. Um, this is the general rule. So there's really two cases. You have a metal that's going to form your cation. Your non-metal is going to form the anion. But you could have a metal with a polyatomic ion, and that will play the role of the anion. Okay, so you always have a metal first with a bunch of nonmetals or a single type of nonmetal. So if we look at these substances, if you look at their formulas, can you identify the acids, bases, salts, or other, in other words, the non-electrolytes, by looking at them? So perhaps what you can do is pause the video, think about it, do it on a piece of paper, and then play the video again to see uh, what is what. So looking at the first one, we have HBr. We said if something starts with an H, it's an acid. Then we have KOH. So if something ends with OH and starts with a metal, we have a base. Next we have metal, non-metal. So that would be a salt. Here we have something that ends with OH, but it is not starting with the metal. So this is an other or a non-electrolyte. Okay, so this is not a base. It's not starting with a metal. Here we have metal with a polyatomic ion, so a bunch of non-metals. So this would be a salt. Here we have only non-metals. So it's an other right, because it will not form ions. Here we have something that starts with an H, or three H's, I should say. So in this case, we have an acid. And lastly, we have metal and hydroxide. So we have a base. Next, if we look at equations, let's say you were given these equations and you were asked to complete complete them or, or find the missing parts. What should you do? So let's look at the first one. We have something that starts with an H, so we have an acid. We know that an acid will split into H plus and the rest. So the first thing you should be writing, knowing that this is an acid, well automatically H plus will get produced. And what are we left with? We're left with the counterpart which is Br. Now, if you look in the periodic table, Br is in group 7, so that means it will have a charge of minus 1. Then we have KOH. So something that ends with OH is a base. So again, it will split between the cation and the hydroxide. So I know that a base always produces a hydroxide ion, and what am I left if I take out the OH from the formula? I'm left with K, potassium. Potassium is in column number one. It will have a charge of plus one. Then I have CaO, metal, non-metal. So I have a salt. So my salt will split between the metallic part and the non-metallic part. So Ca will be my first ion and O will be my second ion. Ca is in column number two, so it will carry a charge of plus two. Oxygen, group number six, will have a charge of negative two. Next one, Zn and SO4. So I have Zn, 
which is my metal, and I have SO4, which is my polyatomic ion. Now you need to remember what the charges are for these polyatomic ions. So SO4 carries a charge of negative two. Now zinc, because it's a transition metal, we don't exactly know what charge it's carrying. We cannot look at the number at the top of the column to figure out what the charge is. It's a special case. So what you have to do is do a little math. So if this is minus two, automatically zinc has to be plus two because they need to cancel out each other since the original formula or the, the original molecule is neutral. Okay, what if we have to go backwards? So I have to recombine this with this. So I'm gonna get BeOH. But now if you pay attention, there are two OHs. How do I say that I have two times hydroxide? Well, I put this in brackets and I put a two as a subscript. So this was my original equation, uh, formula, sorry. And here I have an acid, but if you pay attention, you can see that the end of the anion is COO minus. So you have acetate over here. So you have an H plus and you have the ending with COO minus, you know it's an acid. So we know that these types of acids, the formulas end with COOH. So if I take the COO over here and the H, I get my COOH, and I'll just recopy the rest of the formula in front. So CH3, CH2, it's a little bit messy, but you get the idea. And there's one more example. I have 2Al3+, and 3O2-. So metal, non-metal, I get a salt. So I'm gonna have Al, how many do I have? I have two, and I have O as a non-metal, how many? I have three. So formula is Al2O3. So that's it for this lesson. If you have questions, don't be shy and ask, and otherwise I'll see you for your next lesson. Until then, take care.